all right everybody welcome back to my channel i haven't posted too many videos lately um my computer's broke down had to ship it back to the manufacturer i bought it on amazon and i can't edit videos and i haven't really made a whole lot of videos anyway but today i'm going to do a different video than i normally do but a few months ago i bought an electric bike and it's been great so far but I'm going to, uh, I've been out here a couple times. This is Port Canaveral here in Florida. Ride the bike around on the beach. Uh, I'm just gonna put the camera on my chest and see what the beach looks like and the scenery. But I'm gonna show you the bike here first. Here's my truck. I got a new truck at Tacoma. I had a Chevy Silverado and that kind of broke down. But here's the bike. It's an Ecotrick beach snow bike, 26 inch fat tire and uh, that's what we're going to be riding today so far it's been great i got about 650 miles on it in like three months so uh there it is strapped down we're like i said we're in port canaveral i'm gonna put the camera on my chest and ride around and see what's up This is how I strap it in. Um, originally it was falling over quite a bit, so I put a bungee on one side and then a ratcheting strap on the other side. lock on it because apparently the new thing is for people to try and steal your bike batteries because that battery itself is about 300 bucks so these criminals have decided that they're going to go around selling everybody's batteries and selling them on ebay so, try not to leave anything laying out where people can grab it but Normally I like to listen to some music, but because of YouTube, it's not a good idea because they will take down anything that I put on there. So I'm gonna show real quick how the e-bike works. It's got a pedal assist. It's got, this bike has a 36 volt battery lasts like 20 miles i'm gonna show how it works just like a regular bike you got the speed the shifter you can do different gears but i always keep it in seven it's the hardest one to pedal and it just gives you the most exercise but i don't think it really matters too much but um there's two different modes there's pedal assist so it's got a pedal assist one which is the slowest mode so here's there's two ways you can do it this is the throttle right here 
push the handle back on a little better, but this is the throttle. So when you turn it, it's gonna go like a motorcycle. Or when you're stopped, if you start pedaling, watch, I'll start pedaling. Once you start pedaling, it'll kick the motor in. So now I'm not doing the throttle, I'm just doing the pedal. So that's the pedal assist. This is level one. On level one, you go about eight miles an hour. On level five, you'll get up to about 23, 24, but the battery drains a lot faster on level five. Um, on level five, you could probably only go about 13 or 14 miles. If I was to stay on level one, the whole time pedal, I could probably go 25 or 30 miles, to be honest with you. But I usually go on level three or level four. I mean, it depends on where I'm at though. Like today, we're gonna go out on the beach so sometimes when I go on the beach, if it's a real sandy beach, I'll have to let air out of the tires. Today, I probably won't because Port Canaveral is kind of hard packed. I'll go down here by the marina and look at some of the stuff. I like just checking out the water. I try not to get in anybody's way. So we're just gonna stay over here on this side. If you've never been to Port Canaveral, it's really nice. Um, this little dock area is about, it was out in the ocean. The ocean's only about a half mile to the right. But we'll see if we can see any kind of fish or anything. I do see fish flashing, but they look like they're little Mahara. That's what they look like. Originally, I could never see any fish when I would go out here or anywhere else, but now I'm starting to kind of sort of figure it out. Anyway, we'll go down the boat ramp here and hope we don't fall off. Tons of little minnows right here. I don't know if you can see them, but probably mullet. around here see there's a bunch of turtles out here see how watch it will go up the ramp here i'll just use the throttle i'm not going to pedal first gear going uphill you can see it goes pretty good there's a vulture that's not afraid of me And then we'll do the pedal assist. What we're gonna go to, it's called Jetty Park. Um, you gotta pay if you drive your car in, but so far I've been here like three times with my bike. And I just go in. I'm not sure if you're just supposed to go in or what but i like to pedal with no hands so I, sometimes the camera might be pointing way up into the sky um so i apologize for that because i'm not going to keep adjusting it but when i lean over like this i want it kind of low but i do it about 50 50. half time i do no hands half time i'm steering it i like no hands because it's just more comfortable on my back i'm 6'3 Honestly, I was 225 pounds when I got this bike. I'm down to about 205, and I don't, I don't know if it's because of riding the bike. Um, I'm sure the bike is not hurting me. I don't know that it's helping. I'm literally, you don't feel any resistance when you pedal. So it's hard to believe that you lose weight because of the bike. I do feel like if you're outside being active you're definitely going to lose weight just from being outside because you're out here especially in florida if i'm out here like this i'm going to be sweating i don't sweat a whole lot normally i like the humidity i like the heat that's why i moved to florida but this is a jetty park here this is where you come in if you're going to pay obviously on the bike you just got right in so I just park over in that little parking lot so I don't have to pay because I'm cheap. I mean, it's like 15 bucks every time you come here. So I figured I've already saved 50 bucks by just having the bike on park fees. 
There's a little lake over here that's got freshwater fish in it. It's literally got. So there's a sheep's head. I can see down there. See it right there. Um, there's a bird here though. I'm gonna see if I can get close to it. It's the biggest bird of like I don't know if it's a goose or what it is. Here it is over here. He's not happy with but there's a vulture. See it over there. And he is not happy with the vulture. I'm not sure what it is. It's hard to see it on the GoPro because it's far away. But you can see probably the tilapia swimming down in there. See if I can get a little closer to this bird. He's probably. This thing is huge. Oh, I'm telling you. I don't know what it is. But he doesn't like me either. I gotta get going because he's coming after me. This could be. I'm leaving, bro. I don't know what that thing is, but. He looks mean. So I'm gonna leave him alone. So back to the bike. So if you notice, sometimes when I take off, I'll use the throttle. Sometimes I'll use the pedal. Kind of just depends on the situation. If I'm going uphill, if I'm in the dirt, if I'm in the grass, if I'm on the side, if I'm on the sidewalk, I usually just start pedaling. But I do kind of have ADD, so I would jump around from different things. I, I noticed it when I got out of the truck. And I'm like, look at my bike. Oh, here's a new truck. So my brain goes back and forth more than it should. Good morning. Um, obviously there's a lot of vacationers out here. I like going through this little path street, bike path. I'm not, I think it's for people to walk on, so I go kind of slow. I don't want to crash into anybody. But I think it's made for walkers, but I like it, so I ride up. It's kind of slow so you don't run into anybody. It's kind of like going to the zoo in the tropical forest in the zoo. Here comes some kids. Here's some... Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Yep. Oh, excuse me. I like the jungle-ish look feel. Later on, I might put the GoPro on the mount. I got the GoPro mount right here. Uh, just because it keeps a little bit more of a... angle where it's a constant angle rather than up and down so I kind of like that sometimes this is a little bit more of a one person perspective like how I see it as I'm riding it's probably about 85 already it's pretty hot today So there's five levels, like I said. Yeah, I'm on level three. So you can either just th turn on turn the throttle with my right hand, you can do that. Or you can pedal. When you pedal, it jerks it. So it, it takes a while to get used to the pedal. Especially if you're riding like with no hands and you pedal it, it'll almost throw you off the back of the bike. So that can take a while to get used to. But up here is Jetty Park. Um, It says no bikes on it, but I always ride my bike on it. That's Florida. I think people just do whatever they want in Florida, to be honest with you. I'm gonna go over here and look at the... So we went about a half mile to the east of where we started, and you'll see this is where all the cruise ships come out of. 
but obviously with the coronavirus the cruise ships are still not going anywhere we'll see them they're anchored off out into the ocean Can't ride my bike out on this pier, but so I'll just drive down this way. In about a half hour, it's low tide, so really low right now. Oh, here comes a big, huge cargo ship coming in. I honestly could hang out at these places all day. I love the marinas, I love the piers, the jetties. We're right up here on these rocks with the bikes. Nah, maybe not. This look kind of dangerous, kind of sharp. A ship called the Bahama Spirit. I'm sure it's probably from the Bahamas. Probably been out there a while. Probably excited to get to land. <laughs> I served in the Marine Corps for four years and went on two deployments. So there was times where we were in the ship for about 60, 65 days. I think it was the longest we were ever on a ship straight. And uh, believe me, when you see land for the first time, it's like, oh my God. I just want to walk on solid ground. But we'll go down this way a little bit. So it's, a, it's a nice camp inside. There's nobody here today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This campsite was packed last time with RV. Now there's literally empty. There's two vans, three vans. morning it's actually going pretty quick it's probably going seven miles an hour eight miles Here's the marina where we started at. So basically we're in a big circle. So from there to there, you're in the ocean. I should have brought my kayak out today. I could have actually, my Hobie would have done pretty good on this water today. It's really calm, but it's supposed to be like 10 mile an hour winds. So I didn't really want to go fishing in the kayak. So we're gonna head out onto the beach, I think. See, like I said, last time I was near this whole campsite was packed. Now it is a Wednesday. Last time I was here was on the weekend, I think.
adjust the camera a little bit. It's pointing left. I think it's because. I use a uh, external battery pack on my GoPro. Now it's going to the right. <laughs> um, and I have some Velcro on the back of the chest mount. Um, and I can go about three and a half, four hours charging it on the external battery pack without changing the battery so hopefully um when i get my computer back though i can edit the video and put it online i don't really gonna probably not gonna do a whole lot of editing on it just i want to keep it from start to finish if i can just because it's a little more realistic that way so people can see what the port canaveral beach is like Good morning. Good morning. But over here you can ride your bike up. Hello. Good morning. Let's go up here and go down the ramp and then I walk out onto the beach. Uh, here we go. Again, I just throttled up the hill right there, so that's how you go up a hill. Literally, some people are like, oh, you don't get no exercise with the bike. Well, if that's what you want is exercise, then this is definitely not the bike for you. You can still get exercise. If you put it on zero, let me get out here and show you. So this is really powdery sand right here, and it's going through it, but not very well wheels so i have uh, like 20 psi of pressure in my tires um when you go in the sand like this you want to lower it to about eight but this is the only real soft part when we get out here you'll see how compact the sand really is by the beat by the water it um it is low tide so this water came all the way up and has gone out so now the sand's going to be extremely hard packed so i left my tires at 20 psi um so if you see i just went through all that sand no problem that was pretty soft you know fluffy sand this is hard as a rock right here so i don't even need to let any so i usually let it down to about 10 psi in the tire Today I left them at 20 because I knew that this sand was going to be extremely hard. So I wasn't really worried about it. But you can see the tide went back out, is going out. So it left all this crap on the beach. Um, and like I said, I don't have to lower the pressure on the tires because it's literally like driving on concrete. I do wash the bike every time I ride it by salt water. I use a chemical called uh, Salt Away. And I spray it on with a foam can and then I rinse it off with my pressure washer. Obviously it's windy. Because I'm going 12 miles an hour into the wind. So the audio is not going to be very good. But... You can see even on the hard sand, you can still go with no hands. I don't have any hands on the steering wheel, and I like to do it because it relieves my back. I'm 6'3", and it's just a lot of bending over into the handlebars. This bike, I don't even know how somebody 6'2 or 6'1 could ride it because it's really hard to get on and off for me. And I got long legs and long arms. So if you're under 6'3", this is probably not the best bike for you my wife we bought her the 20 inch folding eco trick fat tire folding bike and that's i like that bike too i ride that sometimes it's a lot shorter but my legs are so long that it's hard for me to pedal it 
So if you're like six foot and under, the folding 20 inch bike is probably the best. Not a lot of people out here today, so we're gonna go. Good morning. Where we started was in Port Canaveral. Coco Beach is down here. This pier is the Coco Beach Pier. I want to say it's probably three miles down there. You can see it way over there. Um, but we're going to go down to that, and then I'll probably ride back on the main roads. I might come back on the beach. We'll see how it goes. It definitely seems to drain the battery a lot faster when you're riding on the sand because you got the resistance of the sand. Um, last time I was actually out here, I got about halfway down this pier and the motor stopped working and I'm like, what the hell's going on? So I stopped and looked at it and couldn't figure it out. I walked for a little while and then it eventually just started working again. But the next day I got home and on the back, I have um, rod holders because I like to fish. So I put a rod holder on each side of the back tire and one of them had gotten twisted and was rubbing on the side of the tire and which was causing it resistance, which I think burned up the motor. Not burned it up, but put too much strain on it to the point that it stopped working. To cool down probably, that would be my guess. But, Other than that, I haven't had any issues. So just make sure there's no resistance on the tires. The sand does burn it up more, but I'm gonna stop here for a minute. There's a uh, cruise liner out here off in the distance. Let's stop and show you what, what they're doing. There's only one today. Last time I was here, I believe there was four of them. way out there you can see the cruise liner out there there's two three fishing boats another fishing boat people do fish out here um the waves are not too bad to be honest with you i definitely could have kayak goodness the problem with it is i live about 45 minutes from the ocean so i never really know what the waves are going to be like they do have like surfing apps that tell you how big they are, but I mean, you just, it seems like you just never know if it's going to be low or high waves, so you just kind of got to guess. Again, this is just speed three. We'll put it in five. Here, I'll show you what five looks like. So we're going to five and we can get, you see the battery's already gone down. As soon as you put it into five, it goes down. This is 17 miles an hour on the beach, 18. I don't really like going this fast on the beach because the sand is really weird. So I'm gonna slow down. You gotta be careful on the sand because you you'll hit weird spots. And I'd rather not crash, so. Like I said, I'm pedaling. I mean, you gotta pedal a little bit. I usually go about 16, 17 miles every time I ride it. So that's how you pile up the mileage real fast. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen any fishermen. This is the first guy I've seen fishing. There's a surfer. Uh, you see a lot of people on the ocean surfing, but I've really never seen anybody catching any waves. I don't know what the deal is. Looks like I think it, people think it's cool to have a surfboard, and they just walk around and sit on it out in the water. They don't really ever catch a wave that I see. 
sure they do sometimes, but not very often. So I did buy a new uh, inflatable stand-up paddleboard. I'll try to get some videos with that. Here's a guy surfing right here. I just said that now he's standing up and it looks like he's actually on, I'm not sure what, oh my Lord, there's a school of like six dolphins out way out there. I thought it was sharks at first, but I have a hard time telling the difference between sharks and dolphins, but normally the sharks don't hang out together. this mode button if you see it, it says 672 miles 11.2 miles per hour but if you push the mode button once it'll show you how far you've gone since we started pedaling so we've gone 3.2 miles and on zone pedal speed three we're still going on five um, I left my cell phone in the car actually. So I was gonna, this is a cell phone holder I bought and then this is for the GoPro. And like I said, I might switch it over later to put the GoPro on there and then I'll quit talking just right around. I'd say this is normally probably 10% of the people that's normally out here. There's probably, in front of me there's probably 30 people normally there's three or four hundred not sure why there's nobody here but i like it makes it easy to pedal you don't got to be dodging two-year-old kids the whole time i did put a product called slime in the tires when i first got them i noticed the air pressure kept dropping in the tires like every two or three days it's called slime and it's like eight bucks at Walmart and you put a half a bottle in each tire and um, so far since I've done that, I haven't had any issues with the air pressure dropping. But it's a real flat beach out here at Port Canaveral. You can walk almost all the way out there and you're only in about two feet of water. If you go down the coast about 10 miles to Melbourne, it gets a lot steeper and you don't, can't walk out that far. New Smyrna, which is about 30 miles to the north, you can actually drive on that beach, a car. You pay 20 bucks a day to park and you can drive your car on there. And it's nice. This one's a little like in between. You can ride your bike on it, but you can't drive a car. So. You get a lot of weird looks with the e-bike. Especially if you're not pedaling, they'll start like, oh wow. It's honestly almost like driving a quiet motorcycle. Um, and then I think I paid $8.99 for this model. My wife's was like $7.30. My wife got the 48 volt battery, so hers lasts a lot longer. Um, but they're both really been good bikes so far. She actually drove hers in the ocean the first day we got it. And got water in the motor and the so we had to take all the water out and dry it and spray corrosive stuff on it and it's so far really still works good so definitely don't recommend driving over there into the water that's what my wife did she got way too close in a wave when you're on a steeper slope 
the waves will trick you every once in a while. This, they're never going to come way up here. On the steep banks, they'll come up and get you. Another thing is it is still early. It's only about eight, 9 o'clock in the morning. So that might be why there's not many people out here. My wrists do get sore from leaning on it, so that's why I like riding with no hands, it helps my wrist get a break, ammo back. That was a big shell that just went right in the tire. I don't know about that one, that was weird. I need to bring my Bluetooth headphones so I can listen to music without it going onto YouTube and getting taken down for copyright infringement. Because it's kind of boring just riding around with no music. But. I was out yesterday riding my bike around and I went over a, a hill to a new beach that I had never been to. And I seen an umbrella flying, it was really windy. So I looked at the umbrella and I'm like, well, maybe I should grab it. But it was going so fast that I didn't feel like running after it. And there was a guy chasing it. And as he came over the hill, I noticed he had no clothes on. And I about crapped my pants and I looked around and there was like four other dudes and none of them had clothes on. So I, Turned around and left relatively quickly. I tried not to be super rude about it, but um, I went down about a quarter of a mile and there was another beach and on the sign it said, clothing optional beach. You may see nudity. <laughs> so, but the first beach I went to did not have the sign on it. So you can't say that I did it on purpose. The second one, I knew when I went on it. And that one had a about 300 men and women piled all over the place. I don't know what was going on there, if it was a swingers party or a nudity convention. I don't know, but there was a lot of people. Like this times 10. And they were all in the book. So I don't know what was going on. But this is the Cocoa Beach Pier. People fishing on it. I think you gotta pay to go on it. But there's the beer way out there. Sounds like they're doing some kind of construction on it. People way up there. In the shade. It's kind of fun being under here, I think. Ooh, something just dripped on it. Water. Um, over here it gets a little softer in the sand. At least last time it was. I think it changes from week to week. Guy metal detecting out there. fisherman boat I've never been out here in my kayak I usually go to Melbourne but on Melbourne you got to go out and surf so it's kind of you got to wait for the perfect waves out here you can just go out that marina and it's fine so and this is actually closer but I haven't seemed to hear too much good things about the fishing here so I don't know but I'll try it hopefully I'll make a video and see what happens One thing about this bike, the brakes, this left brake is the rear brake. 
Here's the bike I was gonna buy. It's a mongoose dolomite. Coming up right here on my right. And that's what I originally wanted was that bike. I got online and looked at it and it was $499 for a pedal bike. This one was $899. So a $400 difference for the electric bike versus the pedal bike. To me, the extra $400 was worth it to have the bike. The battery and the power and the motor. Because I like, this is what I felt like when I was 12 years old riding a bike around. You go, you get on your bike, you go up hills, you go in the sand, you go in the fields, you ride your bike everywhere. You get up the next day and you go ride your bike again. When you get old, like I am, you pedal the bike for one day and then you're sore for a week. And you don't want to go anywhere because you're like, oh, I got to go up that hill. I got to go through the wheat. I don't want to do none of that. But with this bike, you literally can go through anything. There's causeways out here that you go over the intercoastal waterways. And you got to go up on the first half and down on the second half. And they're usually two, about two miles long going over the rivers. And when people on their bikes see me going up it, they literally stop and I like, oh my God, I need that. And you just go right up the hill. We don't even think twice about it. Which makes it really nice when you just go places and don't have to worry. The only thing you have to worry about is the battery. So I've been pedaling now for five miles and I'm on level three. I've been on level three probably 80 to 90% of the time and it's down one bar. When I get down to two bars, I know it's getting really low and I start heading back. You can pedal it on zero but the resistance on it, I'm not sure why, but it's probably equivalent to like pedaling up a 20 degree hill on a regular bike. It's super resistant. Like it's hard to pedal on zero. I wouldn't want to pedal this bike anywhere without a motor. It's not like pedaling a normal bike. That's all I can say. Um, you do have to dodge people on the beach because they don't I just don't think they think there's people riding a bike. That's not their first thought is Oh, there's somebody on a bike They just think they're on the beach and they're in their own world and they're the only people out here Just that's the way it is In about a mile here, I'll go back to the right. There's the, um, should have brought my phone, but the Ron John Surf Shop in Cocoa Beach is up here. We'll drive by that, hopefully, and see what's up. The water is out further, it's clear. Shallow here, it's pretty dirty. Um, I don't think this area is like known for crystal clear water, obviously. There's probably days where you could snorkel, but it's not gonna be a regular thing here, that's for sure. We'll go up a little further and then we'll look for a place to get on the main road because I feel like we have probably gone past Ron John's. Tons of seashells. I mean, if you're really into that stuff, they're everywhere. Some days they're everywhere. Some days are you'll never find them. So it's kind of hit and miss. Depending on the tide, depending on the weather.
find a there's a life vest or a lifeguard tower up here so there's got to be a place to get out when i go up out of here i'll have to walk the bike because there's no way it's going to go into the sand uphill with full tires if i had air nowhere in the tires there's no doubt in my mind that it would go up the hill here comes one right here this is like my wife has he's got the handlebars way up high my wife keeps them down low like a regular bmx bike good morning that was an anchier a-n-c-h-e-e-r bike i've heard good things about them i don't have one so i don't know um but those i think are only like 600 that bike that just went by got good reviews i think all these bikes if you just clean them and take care of them especially when you're riding them around salt water like this they'll be fine if you're just riding them on concrete they'll be perfectly fine i got the fat tire so i could ride it on the sand i'm glad i did because you still can ride it on the hot road like bike trails and concrete you don't have to just ride it on the beach doesn't look like oh yeah I'll we'll go right up here so when I get off now I'm walking it's hard to tell but I put it on level one and then when I'm going through the sand I'll slowly push the throttle to turn the throttle to push the bike so I don't have to push the bike by myself we'll see what happens when I go up here I'm gonna have to sometimes if you're on the beach you got to carry it down steps which if you're a female that's probably an issue but my wife does it. She's only about five, six, 47 years old, just like me. And we can do it, so. If you really wanna do it, you can. But like I said, this is like the most exercise I'll probably get right here is walking through the sand. So this is a hill. We're gonna get back on the bike. And we're gonna turn the throttle and pedal and I let go of the throttle start pedaling and we just went right up the hill motor only I mean I did pedal but it wasn't it definitely wasn't me pedaling that got us up the hill it was 99% motor we're gonna go out here with the coronavirus a lot of these hotels are like a band this isn't even a hotel this is more condo thing but it's been kind of weird i actually didn't make it to ron john's i don't think we'll see If you do buy one of these, I definitely recommend getting a bike lock. Probably better than the bike lock that I have because when you're riding around here, if you want to stop and get a drink or something, you got to lock your bike up because they have, people will steal that thing so fast because they know they can resell them for a lot of money. Like I said, I've heard of numerous people getting their battery taken off. because they know they can resell the battery on eBay. You can ride on the sidewalk or out in the street here. I prefer the sidewalk, but if there's people walking on it, I will go out in the street. This is uh, A1A Highway, I think it is. Either A1A or the Highway 1. Kind of fun just riding up and down the street. We're gonna go.
go back and probably go to the marina or not the marina there's another boat ramp to the east of where we were at that i like to go look at the fish and stuff bike it's got smaller wheels those are 20 inches and it's a lot harder to do the no hand riding for me anyways i'm not sure why but the smaller radius of the tires makes it a lot more difficult for me I love waffle. Oh, they do have Jimmy John. Oh my god. I was back in Omaha this weekend for my son's football game. And I had Jimmy John's. And I had not had Jimmy John's for a long time. Because I didn't think they were out here. But there is one right there. I might, when I pack my boat up, drive over here and get a Jimmy John's hand. For some reason they're not open. Probably too early still. I think it's like 10. When we get up here to Ron John's, I will go into the hotel up the ramp. Show you how the bike goes up hills. Pretty steep hill at the ramp with the parking area. And just so you know, if you do see this video, that means my computer was fixed. I bought a brand new Hewlett Packard Envy. And I bought it strictly for editing videos because this GoPro films in 4K. Well, my old laptop couldn't handle the 4K videos because the processor was too old or the memory wasn't enough, I don't know. So I bought it and I paid like a thousand bucks about two months ago for this HP laptop. And the first time I tried uploading a video, it froze. And it froze and froze and freezes. And so finally, I just sent it back and told them to fix it. Hopefully, and it's gone now and hopefully they fix it or send me a new one. Okay, we're in the hotel. This is right next to Ron John Surstop, but they have this parking area you can park at and it's up a hill. So I'm just, I'm pedaling with the motor and you can see it's a pretty steep hill, probably 25 degree angle. And it went right up it, but see how the battery went down to three going up the hill? Um, it does draw a lot of power going uphill, obviously. If you're going uphill all day, you're probably only going to go four or five miles. But this is a different hotel right next to Ron John. So I'm going to go over there and show you Ron John. If you're planning on coming out here on vacation, this is a good hotel to stay at. They got a nice shopping area. This Ron John Surf House. I've never been to any other one. I've been to one in Clearwater actually, but this thing is huge. I mean, you go in there and you think it's big and then you walk around and you're like, oh my God, it's giant. So here's the e-bike rental place. Two hours for 30 bucks. I'd rather just own mine. Four hour for a bike for 10. Let's go this way. Here's Ron John surf shop. It's like a castle. It's really big. I like the little old style cars. It is that thing. It's two stories. Real big. Um, I think. 
I'm gonna get out here and ride in the street now yeah, because there's a lot of people walking on the sidewalk. It really is a beautiful day though. If you like sunshine. I mean I like that. That's why I moved here. Sometimes I'll wear um, some people call them leggings. Just to keep the sun off my legs for a while because you get out here every day, it's pretty hot. Get sunburned. Let's go down this way to the pier. Back towards the beach. I told some people that I bought a bike and they're like, what do you do, just ride it around? And I'm like, yeah. Well, where do you go? I don't know, wherever I want. I don't really, I'm gonna go into 7-Eleven. Let's see. I need something to drink. I really don't wanna leave my bike this way around. I was gonna get a drink. Maybe we'll get one up here. This looks good. I want a fish taco. And I want Jimmy John's and I want a drink. So I think what I'll do is I will wait <laughs> until after we're done with the bike ride and then I'll go to Jimmy John's. Yeah, when you stop somewhere out here, you want to stop in the shade. Just a heads up. One thing I did learn about Florida is there's always construction going on think because of the salt water especially if you're over here by the ocean um, people are always fixing things because I think the salt just destroys all the buildings uh, I usually go on three again you can go on four or five and you'll go way faster, but it drains the battery a lot quicker. Three is fine. I mean, it's a cruising. I mean, when I first got it, I thought three was really fast. You get on it the first time and you go on level one, you're like, oh my God, this thing's gonna kill me. And like anything else, you get used to it. And then you're, I will ride it with no hands on level five, but I probably not a good idea because you're going 25 miles an hour with no hand. Occasionally I get a weird shaking on the front tire. And that was more when the tire would get low on air pressure, it would wobble. So you always got to make sure you got at least 20 pounds of pressure in each tire if you're riding on the streets going 25. But like I said, since I put that slime in there, the wobbling just has gone away. I haven't checked my tires for probably a month. But I could usually tell when it's getting low because it starts wobbling. So now we're basically just going north. The shore, the beach is on the right of where we were just, we came down the beach. This is just the road that travels along the north-south. But we're west of the beach now. Here's the pier, actually, we'll pull up here and check that. The parking lot for the pier, the Cocoa Beach Pier. Um, I don't know what is going on, but normally this place is packed. So I'm not sure what. 20 bucks to park, no fishing.
no pets allowed. Could just probably hit something here. Apparently, it's, everything's too early. I didn't realize it was that early when I came out. Coming to the Cocoa Beach beer, you know, it's $20 a part. No re-entry and no re -entry. If you're coming down here normally, you can park across the street somewhere and just walk. Like those people park there. And save your money. Just If you Google free parking and search near me, you'll usually find us a couple spots where you can park for free. You might have to walk a quarter of a mile. I'm cheap again, so I like to get by with no paying for parking. Just look at this truck. There you go, nice truck. That sounds really good too. I don't know if I'm supposed to stop at the stop sign or not, but I don't. Normally. Unless I see a car. So we have gone 8.3 miles. I have not stopped talking the whole time, which is really surprising because I usually, that's why I don't usually record things because I don't know what to say. Maybe it's all the energy drinks I drank. I don't know. I only had two. Someday my wife and I want to move over, not necessarily Cocoa Beach. I'm not saying this is the worst place to live or the greatest, but it's not really my style. I'm not sure what my style is because <laughs> I haven't really lived here long enough to figure it out. I've been here for two years, moved here in July of 2019. And this is so far kind of what I do. I drive around and look for places to check out. And Cocoa Beach is not my favorite place, but it is the closest to my house. It's only about 40 minute drive. And I actually didn't go out here to go to Coco. I was still, I wanted to come out here to go to Fort Canal. The sand out of my shoes. Like, I'm sorry, but these houses I would not want to live in. Probably two thousand dollars a month for rent. There's an access point for the beach. That's kind of why I came back here. I like to look around for places that I can put my kayak in ocean without having to drag it too far. Because if you have a kayak, you know it's a pain in the ass trying to drag it around anywhere. So if I can find a boat ramp or a bridge or something that's not insanely far away to drag then that helps me out the I want to get one of those kid trailers so I can hook all my fishing poles into it and drive it up and down the beach I've seen a few people with those I tried putting my dog in it and she didn't like it I got a little fishing mate cart that house is not horrible, but again, it looks like it's just painted. So paint makes everything look good, I guess. This clicking noise is really weird. Like if so, it's coming from the left pedal. See, it stopped. If I don't put any pressure on the left pedal, it doesn't make the noise. That's kind of annoying. I probably could take the pedal off and move it, and I've been meaning to do that. I just haven't gotten around to it. So yes, it is annoying. And yes, you do hear it. See, but if you just do the throttle, you do not hear the clicking. If I just pedal with my right foot, you don't hear the clicking. As soon as I throw the left foot on there, you hear the damn clicking. Oh, 
another thing though. Know, so you'll notice right now I'm going 12 miles an hour, 12.3, pedaling. On level three. If I stop pedaling and just throttle, watch, I'll go, okay, now we're slowing down, we're gonna do just throttle. It won't normally go as fast as it will if you're pedaling. You get about a mile, maybe a half mile slower with the throttle. And it drains the battery much faster if you just throttle it. You're probably only going to get about half the life if you're only throttling. Everybody out here walking around, that's why everybody likes Florida because you can just walk wherever you want to go. And, I mean, there is not a cloud in the sky, to be honest with you. It did look like it rained earlier. Puddles of water everywhere. I did not realize that I went this far. You know, you head back and you're like, oh my God, I didn't feel like I went that far. But apparently we went a long way down the beach. But that's all good. I get some lawsuit money. Did I go through the stuff? I didn't. No, I didn't have a stop. So we're good. I think somewhere up here I gotta go left. My wife and I came out here about a month ago and we went down this road and I'm pretty sure you got to get off of it eventually up here. Should have brought some water. I have some in my truck so I think what I'm going to do is when I go back I'm going to stop at the truck and get some water. And then I'm going to go down to the other boat ramp at Port Canaveral. Something about boat ramps, for me, are entertaining. I like being able to walk on the ramp, see the fish, the people around it, the boaters. Always something weird going on on the boat ramp. Just brings out the weirdness. Yeah, so up here there's a private condo. You can't go through there, so I gotta start going to the left. Get back on the main road. Yeah, not that. that one's going backwards, so I don't like going backwards. I like to try to always be going forwards. And the other thing about Florida is like this road, see how it's flat? That's what 99% of the roads are like. <clears throat> I don't even know if you need like a 10 speed bike, you could usually just use a regular bike. Because you're always kind of just coasting. The only time you're really going up a hill is when you're going on the causeway. Nothing. Go up on the sidewalk, why not? Car coming. Another 
biker. Cruising, no cars, so we're gonna go back in the road. And we've gone 10 miles, just like that. I know it's hard to believe. Good morning. figured out the wind thing but the wind is coming from my left when I don't use any hands it pulls me to the left and I don't really get that it's rather weird to me I needed to go back there I knew I did but I was distracted I didn't bring a mask. That's another reason why I didn't want to go into 7-Eleven. I'm not a big mask guy, but I feel like you need to wear them. Even though I hate wearing them. Well, see we're going into the wind. slow down to 11 miles an hour plus the battery went down to three so obviously the battery is running low 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 lower Push record. Oh, I did. <laughs> that would have been like an hour of me talking for no reason. <laughs> oh, we have peacocks. See these? These, these, here. these were here last time. Just want to check them out. Top of the fence. There's one, two, three. kind of weird I'm not sure how they oh there's another one on the fence over there well the throttle stopped working that was weird not sure why but I'm gonna pretend that didn't happen maybe it was just me I don't know Talking about low, 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 low. They must stay in the same area because last time I was here, those peacocks were in the exact same spot. I do recommend you upgrade the seat. The seat that comes with this bike is like a rock. So I bought a shock post and I upgraded to the seat with like a memory foam seat which made a huge difference but i still wear biker shorts bought them on amazon for like 15 bucks they look yeah something's wrong with the throttle here that's weird we have throttle issues throttle's broke um but i bought biker shorts First time I ever had an issue with the throttle, so I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, the throttle's not working. 
probably a connection somewhere that would be my guess. I mean, the pedal assist works, so that's good. I use them both. So I definitely want them both to work. I'll work on it when I get home and see if I can figure out what the problem is. Could be the salt. I do write it in salt water and it's bad on electronics. More. But we'll see. Sometimes you let it turn off and then let it cool down. It'll. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn it off. And I'll show you how hard it is to pedal. So it's off. Now you see the whole thing just completely slow down. And I'm pedaling. And it's going. But I'm pedaling like pretty damn hard. Like it's. I got to put a lot of effort into getting going here. And so we'll go down to level four. So I, yeah, so it's easier to pedal, but it's still not going very fast. This is no power. Turned off so you can still pedal it. You can still ride it like a normal bike. Still get exercise for all the haters. Oh, you're not getting any exercise. You can still get exercise on it. You know, I consider it to be like riding on a exercise bike with zero resistance is what it's like riding with the motor. Um, so slow we're going, but I'm like, I'm having to pedal it pretty good to keep it going. This is four speed, go back up to seven. The gear shifter is a Shimano. But it's not the greatest. Got yeah, a throttle, something is up with the throttle. We're almost back to the truck. So I'm gonna stop and get some water. And I'm gonna see if the throttle lever or something is stuck or disconnected. Something's not right. <clears throat> See, like that, I normally would have throttled it. The throttle doesn't want to work for some reason. But we are back at Port Canaveral. Again, where the cruise ships normally take off from. Normally, this used to be, when I first moved here, just packed with people every day. Probably one of the industries that was hit the hardest is the cruise industry because they're still not running cruises. And that's tough on people. So we're gonna go to the truck and get a drink. It's way down there. Like it's not, but when you're on a bike, who cares how far it is? Because you're not really doing anything anyway. that comes with the bike for the battery um, when I get home I think there's a fuse on the battery too you can probably reset it see if that helps with the throttle but like I said right now I'm not overly concerned about it it does have weird things that happen sometimes and then they just kind of fix themselves I'm not really sure what that's all about it's electric that's kind of what electric things do at least in my experience.